Zach Sang and the gang. Zach Sang and the gang. We are hanging out in the studio right now with the band Magic. Hello, my friends. Hello, hello. Okay, let's go around here and everybody introduce themselves. Hey, I'm Nazri. I'm the lead singer. Alex, the drummer. Ben, the bass player. And Mark, the guitar player. So you guys, how did this band start? I mean, are you new, you're kind of new to the U.S., right? I mean, decently new. Mm-hmm. Um, as a band, of course. Yeah, I mean, I've been living here for a while. Um, before we started the band, I was writing songs for a bunch of pop acts. Cool. And um, we met through songwriting. So we were just kind of at the studio, and I met Mark, and we had a good chemistry. Uh, but it felt different than kind of writing chemistry. It was yeah. more kind of artistic. And I was like, dude, let's start a band. Is that an interesting transition for you guys as musicians going from people who just write, I mean, kind of being behind the scenes to really being in front of it? And is that a weird transition? Uh, No. You know, it felt pretty natural. You know, the only thing different is that uh, we don't control our schedules now. Yeah. (laughs) So other than that, no, I mean, we've all been dreaming about, you know, being on stage our whole lives and we've all been on stage in, in mm-hmm. a lot of different circumstances but now uh we're doing it together so it's, it's kind of fun what's more gratifying for you seeing somebody else perform your song or you getting the chance to go out there and just kill it oh uh, you know it depends i mean for us like i know myself personally like i've had some songs performed at like the grammys yeah so you know i've been like wow that's huge but uh there's nothing more gratifying than seeing a stranger in front of your eyes you know, connect to you through, you know, your life. That's incredible. Yeah. How do you guys start in music? I mean, give me a little backstory for all of you guys. Hit me. Um, for me, I started, uh, it's Mark, by the way, I started piano when I was about six years old and um, I got forced to practice a lot. I took it very seriously and I just studied my entire life and I studied music in university as well. It's just always been a huge, huge passion for me. Awesome. Yeah, similar to me. I, I started at a very, very young age and I went to college and studied and just worked my butt off and eventually jumped on a plane to L.A. and met up with these guys. Was that like going to L.A. and doing, was that a risk for you guys? Massive. For me personally, it was yeah. massive. I just, I just, I'd kind of gotten to a point where I, everything that was happening for me in Toronto was kind of at a standstill and, and I just needed to make a big move. Like, I have friends who have, like, gone out to Los Angeles, flown out with, like, $2,800 in their savings account, and that's it. And literally just taken risk. I can't even imagine. Yeah, we did a similar thing, but, like, it was sort of calculated, too, because, like, Nazri as a songwriter had a a lot of previous success. Yeah. And he was like, let's start this band. So we all sort of was like, yo, this kind of could be a good thing. You know what I mean? It actually turned into something great. So it it was, I think it was calculated more than just a crazy risk. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a killer thing. I mean, dude, the single is crazy. Who else? have you written for um the most recent was shakira that's uh, awesome did like three songs on that new album um she's a label mate of ours hello shakira um we are also we're featured on her album cool which is pretty cool uh you know did uh pitbull justin bieber chris brown christina aguilera like uh, a bunch of people was this the ultimate dream for you doing a band or were you content with just kind of being behind the scenes and writing for other no, people no 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 that you know that's the point like i i was no matter how big the songs i would write for people i would just get more miserable really yeah i was just i just wasn't feeling anything because it was always what they wanted to say yeah. but i always had my own ideas you know so that's why even with our single root it's it's kind of like it's not what it's a good introduction to get everybody to have some fun with us yeah. because, you know, we're, we're, we're men with a message too. And we, in time, we will show you, you know, and we'll, we'll tell you what we feel and how we feel about love and life in the world. What is the message? Is there one message or is there a whole bunch of different messages? You know, the message for us right now is bringing back really good music and people who play together and, and a real band. Yeah. Um, and that's the first message for us is just to bring back some good, fresh music and then um, and also just positivity. Just be positive, awesome. you know, relax, chill out. That's why our music is really laid back because yeah. we believe in that lifestyle. You know, we don't we don't rush out of dinner and rush here and rush there. We, we try to live life at a, at a medium pace. I can only imagine scheduling for you guys having to deal with Andrew rushing you from place to place. And you just want to sit there and soak it all in. Andrew is a great guy. <laughs> Please go, go, go. Andrew's from RCA and he's awesome. 
<laughs> that's it. That's I, it. You know, it was funny that you said, I know a lot of people who write, right? Yeah. And uh, some people who have been performers, then, you know, they went to writing or performers went to writing, uh, whatever, vice versa. And they kind of said the same thing about it not being fulfilling for them, right? Just not being able to get their message out. Even though, I mean, a song is a part of you, right? When you're writing a song, it is a part of you, essentially, kind of. It is, of course. But, you know, it's like when you work with an artist, the artist has their own filter. Yeah. So you're throwing what you're doing out of your message that's coming through you and then they're filtering it and messing with it and changing it Mm -hmm. so it's it's they become closer to it than you do yeah um and then you know you just like learn to go okay on to the next one but um with magic we there is no filter nobody filters what i'm gonna write lyrically yeah and to me lyrics have always been a big deal for me and i'm you know even with rude as as playful as it is um, I still really took the, ser- the the lyrics really seriously, yeah, and tried to craft them and make them all work and flow together. Uh, so when I do stuff that is a little more serious on the lyrical side, it has that same uh, grooming pattern. How long would it take you to write a song? It, it does. It, 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 I don't know. It could be one shot. Yeah. Sometimes it's a freestyle, and sometimes it's six years. Wow. Yeah. Is that the longest song you ever took to write? Uh, there's a song right now that I've probably been writing it since I was 15 years old. Really? It's never finished? No, it just hasn't. I haven't lived it yet. I haven't lived the moment. Really? Yeah. What is that moment? Um, You know, it's called What It Takes to Love. Okay. And uh, may, I just haven't experienced, uh, you know, like what it takes to love yet, I guess. Is that important to all of you guys living what you write, essentially? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Right? Having it be personally connected to you guys? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it can, it, I mean, it helps for sure. But then there's also, um, I was just thinking of this for some reason. What, what's her name who wrote I Don't Want to Miss the Thing by Aerosmith? Oh, uh, um, Diane, Diane, Diane Warren. Diane Warren, Diane Warren. Diane Warren yeah. says she was written some of the greatest love songs of all time. Amazing. She says she's never actually been in love. So I think it's different for some writers. So you can write, and I've even written songs that, I didn't really know what it meant, and then all of a sudden, and then I lived the moment, and then I yeah. went, oh my God, that's mm-hmm. crazy that I nailed it so on the head with that. So it's different, um, but it definitely helps, for sure, if you have the experience. Rude, our, our song, Rude. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know with, with Rude, we actually, it's actually started off a lot darker. Uh, it was about a, a real-life situation, and I was in not, a, I didn't have a very healthy relationship that I was in, <laughs> and uh, she got mad at me, um, and she was mean. And then the next day, I was singing, why you got to be so rude? Don't you know I'm human too? And it was this really dark vibe. Uh-huh. But it wasn't working for our band. So like three versions later, we came up with this. Wow. So, you know, it, it, it did stem from something real. Uh, with that, it's different. I mean, if I'm writing for somebody else, I don't need to live it. Yeah. I can do that. I could send the message through. That's a talent. Just oh, like what you, you said with Diane Warren, right? That's a talent, right? Being Absolutely. able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes just for that moment to write a song and then be able to just come back and, and do your thing. Like, yeah. that's interesting. Thank you. Thank you. But with Magic, you know, uh, this is going to be what we're going to perform forever. So it would be great to feel connected to everything. Do you see this band lasting forever? You just said you would perform it forever. Uh, yeah, we're going to last forever. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> yeah, confident. Like, that's <laughs> awesome. As long as we don't piss each other off, yeah. Is that scary? I mean, like, no, do you no. like each other that much? We get along. How long have you known each other? Like, uh, was this all meticulously planned? Like, how do you know each member? Um, you know, I met Mark. Mark and Alex have known each other for years. They played with another artist for about five or six years. Ben and Mark played in Toronto, like, gigs here and there. Um, and I knew Mark. I met Mark, like, I shook his hand, like, seven years ago through a friend, I remember. Mm -hmm. And I've always known Mark through people Mm because Mark is one of, like, the best musicians out of Toronto. So everybody knows. That's a big one. And Ben was one of the the kind of up-and-coming hot new bass players. Yeah. So I didn't really, I didn't know that about Ben, but I found that out when he joined. But, um... But yeah, just through writing and production, we all have a similar love for songwriting. Yeah. And that's what magic is. Magic is for songwriters who came together, but we also play our instruments and mine's a voice and Mark plays the guitar and Ben plays the bass and Alex plays the drums. But we're we're songwriters. We're in the studio every day writing songs. You all have assembled a kick-ass team here. 
Seriously. Hey, thank you. You want to join the band? I would love to. <laughs> I really bring no talent, but I'd play the hype. record. Do you, have a, do you have a hype? Oh, I can I can hype the, the crap out of you, man. Sweet. Yeah. I'll get up there. I'll scream and just know, guaranteed, like, that'll be the only song I ever play on the radio. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, you'll, I'll, I'll, every, every 10 minutes or something, because I have to throw someone else in there, but every, like, 10 minutes, done. Sweet. Sweet. No, but seriously, you guys are super talented, and I'm so honored to have you guys in here. I have a feeling you guys are going to do some big stuff. So, thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Really, thank you. Thank you.